Now for Venn diagrams, um, this is a great way to represent multiple pieces of data or just categories, it doesn't even have to be data. And so to make sure we have down the basics of Venn diagrams, we're going to do example two. Now remember we talked about in the text that these are known as sets, okay? So in this case for A, it's insects and flies. B, it's insects and cats, so those are those two sets. And C, it's athletes and students. So let's think about this. If we're comparing these two sets and we want to draw a Venn diagram, you want to ask yourselves, can insects be flies? And after you ask yourself that, can flies be insects? So we want to create a universal set. So we give ourselves a rectangle. And there's a lot of other things in the world besides insects, right? But it does take up a piece of our universe. I'm drawing it big because these are the only two things I'm talking about. So I'm going to label this insects. And then flies are just some of the insects, right? If we have spiders, we have other things. So this is a little circle inside the insects. Okay, let's go to B and C, and then we'll talk about describing the relationships. So, again, for B, I'm going to give myself the universal set, or I like to call it my universe. <laughs> and then insects and cats. Are, can, they, can insects be cats? Vice versa. Can be, cats be insects? No. So that's why I give myself a circle here and a circle here. And this will be insects and these will be cats. They won't overlap. Now for C, athletes and students, I just gave myself a really large triangle for no reason, but <laughs> it happened. Can athletes be students and can students be athletes? And are all students athletes? Are all athletes students? So that's why we have two circles that overlap. So we have athletes and students. Because some athletes are students, some students are athletes, but not all of them if that makes sense. And so you'll see this definition here. When you have a set inside of another set, this is known as a subset. When you have two sets that don't even touch, this is known as disjoint. And when you have two sets that overlap, that's why it's called overlapping. So these are your three options. So knowing that now, let's go to example three. It says, given the qualified propositions, determine if the sets are subsets, overlapping, or disjoint. And actually, if I want to be grammatically correct, this should be a capital O. Okay, let's go dark green. Now, this is the thing, qualified, all right? That means whatever I'm saying is true. I know you're going to want to fight it and be like, what? Dogs can't drive. Why are we talking about this? Well, that one actually makes sense. But <laughs> um, just make sure that, you know, we're just assuming whatever's written here is is the truth. They're, they've been qualified. So no, no drugs, oh, sorry, no dogs can drive a car. All right, well, this gives it away. No dogs, right? Well, they're definitely not going to overlap. Uh, it's not going to be a subset. So that's why it's disjoint. So for B, many PCC students are on financial aid. Not all of them, right? Many are, and not none. 
So that's why this would be overlapping. C, see this is the one you might fight. <laughs> Hopefully not. All math is fun. All right, you can't fight me on it. It's been qualified. So that means because all of it, it's going to be a subset. All right, next video we'll go over how to read Venn diagrams.